So I am back with part two of the Nokia Siemens Flexi VC DNA teardown. What we have here is the power amplifier of the system. And as you can see, it has six antenna outputs and it has a rather large DC input terminal. As you can see here, it's rated for 48 volts at maximum 35 amps. And just if you are in doubt, do not use this wire as a handle. So as you can see, this unit is bigger as expected with all the antenna outputs. And it is quite a heavy unit, all encapsulated. So let's get it torn apart. So with the lid undone, let's see what's inside of this. <laughs> yeah, okay. That was anticlimactic. I had just hoped that just these few screws in the lid. Okay, so now I have all the screws undone. We have the three lids all loose. And I cut uh, the receiving output wire out of the shield. And what we have here is really some piece of machinery. The first antenna plug we have here is a TRX and RX, and the other is just a RX. So we have receiving and transmit receive. So if we take a look from further up, we can see that this cavity over here goes up here. That is only a receiving cavity, while the transmitting and receiving cavity has both a receiving cavity and a transmitting cavity with the somewhat larger tuning cavities. Um, this seems to be done in one piece. Uh, here we actually have some tuning cavities that are machined and screwed in, but in the receiving cavities it's uh, made from uh, the casing itself. The tuning pins on this one are, as you can see, very nice, gold plated, rounded, polished, different sizes, some are bigger than others. So the overall quality of this product really seems to be higher uh, compared to some of the other amplifiers that I have taken apart. This is clearly one of the more expensive systems. All right, let's take a look inside. Okay, with this shield off, what we can see here is we have the power input here. This is the power distribution to the three modules. There is some heat sinked inductor cores here. This is the ferrite cores we can see. As first mentioned, we have the input DC down here we see some long rows of ceramic capacitors. Over to the right there is a auxiliary power supply and the same goes for the left side. On the left side we will see that we have two power supplies or three power supplies each for one module. At the input terminals we can on the other side see here that we have first some varistors for SORCH voltage input protection and a couple of chokes. Up on the right side we'll see that we have a planner transformer, we have some output capacitors 
and there's an output joke. And this goes on for all three power supplies. The planner transformers consist of about 10 layers of PCB, wherein the tracks of the PCBs are the coil of the transformer. The power amplifier consists of three power amplifier modules. Each module has an output power of 60 watt. Each power module is a three sector RF module which are able to handle both GSM-H, VCDMA, HSPA and LTE telecommunication technologies concurrently. The transistors and everything else is mounted on an aluminium silicon carbide heatsink. We can follow the inputs down here at the bottom, which goes up through a coupler where it can choose between the two different inputs. From here the signal goes into an integrated RF LDMOS amplifier, which has an output power of 5 watts. The signal from here goes on through a output filter up to a an Anaran Singer 3 coupler. From here it can go to either amplifier. So depending on which signal is being sent, it will go to either the, the GSM Edge amplifier, the VCDMA or LTE. From here the output signals are routed through different paths which are coupled with different shieldings and capacitive coupled tracks in the layers up into the output filter and in at the bottom of the output filter we have a 50 ohm dummy load or possible attenuator. The output connector up here connects to the cavities where the signal is passed through the filtering. Okay, with everything unscrewed, let's take a look at the underside of this. First there is a metallic shielding gasket. Pretty much sticks to everything on the board. Okay, that's not coming off that easy. On the front side of the central processing board, we will first notice the three optical inputs down at the bottom. What we have out here in the side and the left side is the power connecting power connections down to the power supply board that we saw earlier. Over to the right, we have a Freescale NXP PowerQuick 2 CPU with SD RAM sitting to the right of it. To the left of that we have a Altera Cyclone 4 FPGA. I know I wrote 2 but it's actually a version 4. The next chip to the left is a NSN which is short of Nokia Siemens networks. Um, it just has some number. It is impossible to look up these ICs that are made entirely for this product and by themselves. But what we can see is that we also have three almost identical ICs sitting above it, one for each power amplifier. As we can also see we have the outputs and the feedbacks and the receiving connections to the power amplifier part. On the back side of the card we can see that we have the back side of the CPU section sitting here. We have a little additional SD RAM for the Altera Cyclone 4 chip. Other than that we have some power supply sections for the individual chips for the three power amplifiers. At the bottom we can see three sections. These are feedback amplifiers from the cavities where it measures output power. At the top we have the three individual sections for the power amplifiers and I will take those in details. 
Looking at a single module's transmit and receive electronics, we can first see that over here on the left side we have the LTE electronics, which goes through a DAC, digital analog converter, goes up into a small amplifier, which then leads out to the connection to the power amplifier itself. Over here we have a, another DAC which is connected to uh, the small amplifier here which is then connected to the VC-DMA variable gain amplifier which goes down to the power amp. Up at the top we, we have the inputs for the transceive-receive of the GSM front-end module and we have another of those over at the right side. Down in the right side field here we have the receiving filtering consists of some unnamed chips on chips I'm not able to find any data sheets on and there's a setup with some saw filters and it's going down here through a lot of filtering resistors capacitors down into a analog digital converter Thank you very much for watching part 2 out of 3 on the Nokia Siemens Flexi VCDMA base station. The next and last part will be about the antenna.